Okay, you caught me. I'm cooking again. Thank you for all my current subscribers and uh, newcomers. Go ahead and push that red subscribe button and join the family. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am cooking some chicken. You already know how I clean and prepare my chicken. I just got a bag that had already been cleaned and everything that was frozen and put this in the pot. And then we added a red pepper red bell pepper and we added one purple onion so we filled the pot halfway with water and we're just cooking this chicken we haven't decided which route we're gonna go with it yet but we will be updating you so while this cooks we'll be getting some other ingredients together to put in this and it's smelling good already Whew. We're going to add some white mushrooms. We got these on sale. Uh, I'm, I'm going to see how much this cuts up uh, and how much this is when I'm done. And I may add another package because I did get a great deal. Okay, now what I want you to see is I'm slicing up these mushrooms. Because we're going, what we're going to make is going to be layered. And the mushrooms is the body of it. Okay, we're going to make a chicken pasta dish, but we're not going to use pasta. We're going to use um, these mushrooms instead of pasta. It would be like the concept of making lasagna, but instead of using your lasagna noodles, uh, we're going to use the mushrooms. All right? So we have uh, finished cutting up all of these. And... Uh, we're going to see how the chicken is doing. And right now, it seems to be doing pretty well. Let's stir it around a little. Yeah, it's getting there. It's not quite there yet, but it's getting there. Now, you can opt to use um, chicken breasts or even chicken thighs, but I just like the legs. And when it's time to debone them, it's so easy to get the bones out. All right. So it does look like quite a bit, but I am going to go ahead and add another pack to it. Okay. We're using a half a package of your beef sausage. And I'm just going to slice this up real quick. That's the sausage cut up. I did opt to get some more chicken. I got some... Uh, chicken thighs and of course you know me I cleaned them the way I always do and I've got them on to boil because I want it to make sure I make a big pot a pan of this so I don't want it to be uh, short on chicken okay so we're just waiting for that to cook to go on to the next step okay so we're taking the chicken out so we can debone it okay we deboned the chicken. Now we're going to cut it up um, in uh, smaller pieces to get ready to put our sauce together. Cutting up the chicken, just make sure you're taking out any pieces of griddle, gristle that you find too along the way. See like here, we're going to have a piece of gristle we're going to take out. That right there. So as you're cutting it up, you find any gristle, go ahead and remove that. Now, once we're done here, we're going to actually saute this with some um, seasonings and things before we create the sauce that's going to be in this uh, meal. So, we're almost done cutting this chicken up and on to the next step. Okay. Now, we're going to put a little grapeseed oil in our pan. Not too much. And we're going to take that chicken we just cut up. Let's get this fire going. We're going to take this chicken that we cut up and we're going to saute it. Now be mindful that the broth the chicken came off I had the onion in it. And if you look closely, I got all that onion out of there that was in that broth from the chicken that we boiled with the onion in it. Okay? So you just take something... You'll take an apparatus like this and you're just going to scoop down in that broth and get all that onion off like I did. 
because you want that flavor. Now, as you're sauteing this chicken in this uh, here, we're going to put a little burn on it. Um, we will, if we need some water or some liquid more, we will add off of the broth that came from this original chicken, okay? So, what we're going to do is just going to start taking this and putting some of this in here. It's not quite hot yet, but it's getting there. Yeah, you can hear it. It's coming. Yeah, you hear that? Yeah, and we just want to sear this chicken. Yeah, we're going to put a little burn on it. It's an extra step, but as far as flavor, it'll be well worth it. Okay? I'm just going to go ahead and put all that chicken in there. Okay? Yeah. if you like you can add some more onions so it's more visible in your recipe okay I just want to put a little burn on this meat That smells so awesome. Okay, at this point, I'm going to add very little seasoning. The only thing I'm really going to use is the blackened seasoning. I'm going to add that to this chicken, and that's about it. Because we are using something I love, and it has its own special flavor that will overtake the dish and just make it so wonderful. Okay, there we go. We got that little burn on that. That's what I like. Let me get that little burn on it. I don't know. It just seems like the flavoring of the meat is so much better when you get that burn on it. Okay. Since we are making a lasagna, and it is an Italian dish, we have to have a little sausage. You all know that. You got to have a little sausage if it's if you're gonna call it Italian. You got to have a little sausage somewhere in the meal, okay? Okay. Put a little burn on that also. Once you see that sausage curling, you know it's pretty much done. I'm put this top on this. Like I said, we put a burn on the chicken. Um, I lost a clip, so I wanted to let you know that I added two jars of sauce and the sun-dried tomatoes. These have an excellent flavor on them. They're julienne cut, and they are in um, extra virgin olive oil and uh, balsamic vinegar. This is what I was saying gives a magnificent flavor to the whole dish. Uh, I did get this at um, uh, Costco's, which is a wholesale place, in case you're wondering where you might be able to get this. But this was added in order to create the wonderful sauce that you'll see next. We're getting ready to uh, start layering this. Excuse me. Okay. I'm going to start by, we've already rinsed off all of our um, mushrooms and we have our bowl of spinach. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to take just a little bit of this um, grapeseed oil and put in the pan so that what's on the bottom of it does not stick. And you're just going to rub that around, even on the sides. Rub that around. 
and that's just to keep what we're putting in here from sticking. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and these um, mushrooms, we are going to put some seasoning on them. Just a little, we're going to use this roasted seasoning. And we're just going to put that around on them. Just for a little seasoning on these before they go in there, okay? So you're just going to season them. Okay, and that's the roasted um, garlic herb. Okay, now we're going to start laying these tomatoes in here. See this? You want to cover the bottom with your mushrooms. Okay, you're using this as if it was pasta. Same way you would cover the whole floor or bottom of the pan with the pasta. You're going to do the same thing with these mushrooms, okay? See, that's why it's important when you're cutting them, you cut them like flat. Yeah, so that that way they can go in here and be flat, okay? And make a clear and concise covering. And wherever you see holes, you can just put one over top of it and cover it up. I normally do at least two layers of these. That's why I went ahead and cut up some more mushrooms in case I needed to do a third layer. And right now, two layers seems like it'll probably be enough. You're just going to take some of your smaller pieces and go around and fill in your holes, okay? Just go around and fill in your gaps. All right, now that you feel like that layer is good, we're going to take our cheese. We have our miscellaneous cheese. This is what I call this one. It's just a Mexican style cheese. And you're going to take, and you're going to make a layer of that. You see that? That's going to ensure that all this kind of molds together. Now we're going to use our spinach. Now we're going to use our spinach. Okay. We're going to start taking the spinach. And you're going to do the same thing. You're going to be layering the spinach. Okay. Just going to take and layer this spinach. Okay. Like I said, you'll lay pizzas over it. Go ahead. All right. And once that layering is done, you're going to uh, use another layer of your cheese, okay? And then it's time to do a layer of the meat. And what you're going to do is you're just going to shake this off of here a little bit at a time. So you don't want two big glops. You want to try to get the meat evenly spread around, okay? And then when you're moving it, you don't want to move the cheese and the spinach out of place. You want it to stay in place, okay? Just put this here. If the bigger spoon is too much for you to control, then you can just take Get you a smaller spoon and just start spreading that around. And then just put some where you see you need it at. Okay? See that? Let's go around and just fill in the gaps. Okay? You need to fill in the gaps for this. Okay, 
that look good to you. And we're once again, here's our Italian cheese we've opened up. And we're going to start using that to layer. Okay. Now you use as much or as little cheese as you like. I like to use quite a bit of cheese, especially once I get to this layer, because I want it to form and pretty much stick together. Okay, so now we're ready for the next layer. Mushroom layers done. Next spinach layers done meat layer okay so we're going to put that cheese last layer of cheese on top okay all righty Now just be mindful that each time you put a layer on, you're going to put some cheese on top of it so it all marries together very well. Now this last layer, you're going to put more cheese than you put on the individual layers, of course. Because this is your last and final topping. Okay, we're going to use some of the mixed cheese as well. presentation. All right. We're going to sprinkle our favorite friend on top, but today will be accompanied by Mr. Oregano. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. And Mr. Parsley. Love that Mr. Parsley. All right, we're going to put this in the oven, and when it comes out, we'll show you what we got. Okay. I'm going to set your oven to about 350, I'd say 375 or 400. Just make sure you're watching it. And we're going to put this in the oven. When it comes back, we'll be back. All right, it should be done. Woo-wee! Okay, there we go. Now it's done. Let's go ahead and see if we can uh, cut a piece of this so you can see just how it is. Okay. Mm, 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 mm. That flavor is wonderful on that. Let's get us a plate. Okay. 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 Pull that out of there. All right. Fork. Now this is always better the second day because it will be thicker and more consistent. Mm. Oh my goodness. Mm, 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 mm. That is wonderful, I'm telling you. Yes. So my only other instructions I want to add to this is that once you've cooked it, you might want to wait and put it in the refrigerator overnight and then serve it for the next day because that way it will have a thicker consistency to it. But other than that, it is so good. And if you put some garlic bread with this, you will hurt yourself. Oh, 
Thanks so much for watching. Please try this out. This is a no carb, no pasta lasagna. Mm, mm, mm. Thanks for watching again. Like and subscribe. Bye bye.